15, I was a stay-at-home dad for a while, but then we had kids, and um, <laughs> we had to get out of there. And, um, my wife and I, we actually have, uh, we're blessed with three children. When I say blessed, I'm not just throwing that out. Some people use that word loosely. We were blessed because when we first got married, we were actually told we couldn't have children by my mother-in-law. And um, <laughs> she thought she was in charge because <laughs> we were living with her. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, tons of money in Christian comedy, and um, we're the first two we had in the hospital. Uh, the third one, we did something a little different. I don't know if it's popular here. I read an article that it was better to have the baby underwater, so we did that, and um, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Seriously, because turns out not everybody at the YMCA had read that article. <laughs> Lifeguard. <laughs> and it is, and then we have three boys. I don't know what it's like raising girls, but like boys are just so crazy and all the time. Anybody live, like have boys in the house? And it, yeah, is it, is it? It's like living in a haunted house, isn't it? Like they, they make so much noise, and then all of a sudden they become like you, you think you're by yourself, and all of a sudden you're like, no! Nah! How, how, how did you? Thought I was in this stall all by myself. <laughs> Do you have a problem with that? They stick up on you in the middle of the night? Isn't that horrible? Like 2 a.m. I'll just be laying there and I'll just open my eyes. Just look over. There's my nine-year-old. Boom! Right there. And he's not even saying anything. He's just standing there just staring. Like at any moment, he's just going to go... He doesn't. He'll just stand there for like 10 minutes just holding the kitchen knife. And I'll say, that's a joke, I'm from Texas, so it's a gun. <laughs> and sometimes it's difficult, Tim and I talk about this, uh, like it's difficult to be a comedian because there's things that, that you're not, that makes you bad at being a father. You know, when the first one, uh, Coulter, our first son, you know, I just wasn't prepared and I was shocked at everything. I didn't even know what kids look like when they're born. I thought they were pink and cuddly like you see on TV. <laughs> They're goofy, man. <laughs> Why would you tell me that? I'm on the video going, okay, here it comes. It's a, it's a grub worm. <laughs> and the doctor was trying to give us advice. The doctor was like, okay, if the baby is crying, just calm down because it's, it's one of three things. It, he's either tired, one, or two, um, uh, he's hungry, or three, he has a dirty diaper. Well, I'm a, a comedian. I was like, shouldn't dirty diaper be number two? <laughs> He didn't even laugh. He just turned to my wife and gave her a pamphlet on single parenting. <laughs> but I, but it, I am turning into my father. My father would say things that I promised I would never say. I don't know if other dads go through that, but I hear myself saying things like that my parents said to me, like, quit crying or I'll give you something to cry about. Or, you know, don't make me come up there. Or, you know, hide in this box till company leaves. <laughs> Like it, because there's just things I'm never going to be good at, you know? One of them is the protector of the family. I'm the protector. <laughs> First of all, I got the wrong body. Second of all, this is my real voice, okay? <laughs> it's okay. The sound guy's not messing with you. This is it, all right? So think about that. Like, if you were a burglar breaking him downstairs, would this scare you? <laughs> you better not be down there. <laughs> Stand at the top of the stairs and go, you better get out or I'll call my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know, and I love my kids. I want to be there for my kids. And I, I also think it's more difficult nowadays than it was when my parents were raising me because do you think kids are more advanced because of like technology and stuff? Like it makes them, I think, smarter. Like, you know, my, my nine year old came into my office the other day and he was like, Dad, I forgot what my password was to my FTP site, but I just created a cartoon. I want to upload it for Timmy. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, I didn't, uh, thankfully my oldest was like, Trent, what do we say about using big words in front of Dad? <laughs> but I didn't even know what he was talking about. He created a cartoon. He wanted to upload it on the computer. I, when I was nine, I was not uploading things on the computer. You know, when I was nine, I was like, this glitch.
glue tastes good. <laughs> Wouldn't upload. The only thing I ever uploaded was once I got a crayon stuck in my nose. And <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know well either because you couldn't afford to go to the ER. And I was like, I'm going to get it out. And he was like, stand outside. It's hot. It'll melt. <laughs> what we do? And, and, and I, I, we get all this advice about like how to raise your kids. You know, I got a ton of advice on my Facebook page uh, when we had our first son. And uh, one, a lot of it was about discipline. You know, like uh, some people are for time out. Some people are uh, for spanking. Um, I'll just be honest here. We prayed about it. And then we got the James Dobson Strong Will Child book. And... That helped us, because, you know, it was thick enough that when we spanked him... <laughs> I told that joke one night, and this lady came up after the show and was like, you're advocating child abuse, you should never spank your children. And I was like, have you read Proverbs where they talk about it? And she, she was like, that was different, that was the Old Testament, they didn't have time out back then. And I was like... <laughs> it's like, yeah, they did, what was the lion's den, huh? <laughs> All I'm saying is there were times where a spanking was going to work better than a timeout. One time I was down front. My dad used to lead singing in our church. My dad said on this next song, let's all stand to our feet. And I don't know what made me say this, but I was like, yeah, everybody, let's stand to our feet. Good thing he said that. I was going to stand to my liver. <laughs> we never sang that song. He just shut the door. He just walked down. He took me outside. And, you know, and I deserved it. But I remember it because it was embarrassing because it was right in front of my wife. <laughs> we got a lot of advice on is like don't let your kids play video games all the time so i started really studying that and i think why kids are indoors and playing video games partly is because how dangerous society has become too and that's really why the parents need to step in and be active in their lives because you know there's all that um you know like the government it says, you know, that there's terrorists everywhere, and you know, if they have that, if you see something, say something. Like, if you see something weird, say something. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that does not work <laughs> if you're in Walmart. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're tattling on everybody. Like, <laughs> and, you know, I went to telling somebody once, and then I got in trouble because somebody's in front of me telling on me. And, um, <laughs> They have all these rules, like, I don't know if you guys fly a lot, but there's that, you know, like, you can't have your phone on in the plane. Today, the guy was like, you gotta turn your phone off. And I was like, really? Why? And he's cause, it's like, cause if you have your phone on, the plane could crash. I'm like, oh, I'm not buying that, because if that was the case, why would terrorists bring bombs on? Why wouldn't they just stand up in the middle of the flight and turn their phone on and be like, all right! <laughs> I will now fling me this angry bird. <laughs> And we would all die like pigs. <laughs> I even got in trouble one time. I was trying to fly through Albuquerque, and uh, I had my, uh, I just got the iPhone, which I love, by the way, it does everything in the world. It, you know, even before Tim introduced me, I was back there using the deodorant app. And, uh, <laughs> I like how some of you laugh, and some of you are like, does it do that? <laughs> Well, my oldest son had actually programmed his voice, so whenever somebody calls me, he goes, hello, dad, pick up your phone. And so I was kind of playing with that, and I was trying to go through the uh, metal detectors, and, and so I set my bag on there, and I put my phone in, and uh, one of these TSA guys like went through my bag really quick, and I had a tube of toothpaste. That's another thing government won't let you have any kind of liquid, or I didn't know that meant toothpaste, and the guy pulled out this tube of toothpaste, he was like, what is this? And I was like, calm down. <laughs> it's toothpaste, man. <laughs> What are you, from West Virginia? <laughs> I know, he was mad. Because <laughs> he was. <laughs> Nobody's from West Virginia, are they? Seriously? I'm sorry. I'm so... I promise I will speak slower. I... <laughs> And uh, it started going through the metal detectors, which was funny because he, uh, as soon as the bag got in the metal detectors, my phone was in there, and so somebody called me, so my ringtone went off. So all of a sudden, you hear in the bag, hello, because that's my ringtone. And it was my son going, hello, dad. He was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a kid in there? <laughs> I was like, calm down. <laughs> 
He doesn't have toothpaste. So, <laughs> but the point is, is like I do. I think like technology has made kids almost more advanced. I also think it may make kids more like kids more lazy. Do you guys agree with that? Like, there are so many things that we didn't have that makes kids lazy. I, I took my oldest son, Coulter, uh, to one of my comedy shows a couple weeks ago, and afterwards we stopped at a gas station to have dinner. And, um, <laughs> I make that kind of money. <laughs> and I got these funny t-shirts and uh, Chuck Norris buttons and stuff, and I sold really well that night.